Okay, you guys probably know we have these conversation cards which have been inspired by the podcast. Um, when our guests come on the podcast, they leave a question in the book and then those questions become these conversation cards. On the other side of it, this QR code here can be scanned to see who answered the question that was left in the book. Um, and they have different levels now in version two. So you have level one, level two, level three, and I think level three is the deep ones, right? This one's a level one, so that's quite an easy question, but they get progressively deeper. And um, Natasha's team over here have been working on the project, so I'm gonna get a quick update on how it's going. Loneliness is as bad for your health as smoking 15 cigarettes a day and it's been now recognised by the World Health Organisation as one of the biggest global threats and also actually costs. So there was a study done on employers in the UK. Cost, loneliness costed 2.5 billion a year in terms of support, etc. and things they needed to combat that. The question actually becomes, how do we increase people's ability to open up, to understand, so that they can experience those deeper connections. We also test this format with strangers. The results were the same. We got them in a room, we put them together. One started a connection of three and left a connection of nine and 10. So then it's a question of how do we scale this? So I always see three streams here. Or firstly, inspire. Secondly, facilitate. And three, advocate. So inspire, I see as content. And then we lead on to facilitate, which is when products come into this. And then finally, advocate. So how can we then start to work with policy leaders, governments, etc., and so start to create change from the offset. So I've put together a little 30, 60 day, 90 day roadmap. I think that's essentially where I see this going. I think it's amazing. In the slide before you talk about the next 90 days, <laughs> MVP in the content series and figuring out what that is, I think that is the best place to start. Yeah. What does loneliness mean as a good, is it even like a good content series? Like, yeah. I had someone at my talk yesterday in the crowd, the front row. I mean, you can remember there's a thousand people in the room. He's in his suit, he's our, your age. Um, and he asks, he gets the microphone. And he goes, How could you build that community when you never had a community growing up? That makes sense. So how can you try to build projects and how to get that authentic feedback from honest people and you never had that people, how you can build that? Yeah, yeah it's a really great question. Um, what I know for sure is that the doorway to connecting with other people is, um, one of the doorways is vulnerability, which means like, even you saying that's going to make you friends, by the way. Like even you saying in front of this big group of people that you're like looking for friends and that you've come from another country and um, you're trying to figure out how to like foster connections so you can build up that group of people, that will make you friends. And as I came to learn from doing my podcasts and various other things that I've done with content and whatever else, I used to think that vulnerability and being honest and um, opening myself up was a repellent, but it turns out it's a magnet. Because yeah. what you just did is going to make a bunch of people that in this room come up to you and say, me too. It's a really important thing you're doing. It's crazy. It's really important. And, it can, and the variance on where you could end up with this mm -hmm. project mm -hmm. is like, you could change millions of people's lives mm -hmm. and save people's lives, mm -hmm. or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what it's, I mean? No, it's true, it's true. It's a big variance. It's true. So and it comes down to execution, planning, yeah. focus, and all the things you said. Thank you. 62.5% of you that are watching this now don't subscribe to the channel. So if you could do me a favor, if you like what we're doing here, if you want to come on this journey with us over the next 10 years, please hit the subscribe button, come with us. Doing this vlog started as a bit of an experiment, but honestly, it's been one of the most fun things to do. And I'm thinking a lot about how we develop it. And here's a little bit of news. We've just hired um, another team member to work on the vlog. So that's two people now, which means the standards can raise, we can do more, we can edit faster, we can do everything better. And that's because you guys voted with your subscription to join this channel. So we now have William and we now have a guy called Lish who's joined our team both full time and they're both working on this product. So thank you for choosing to subscribe, it means a lot. And um, before we go, thank you for your comments because I read all your comments every week. It's one of the things that really puts a smile on my face because you, you guys are very, very honest. You take a long time to give us feedback in the comments section. You tell us what you love. You tell us the things that you want to see more of you. And we really appreciate it. So thank you so much. I edit videos, I like Premiere Pro, a little bit After Effects. <laughs> Makes me all nice and warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Who, who's gonna ask me questions? What do you wanna know? Tell us about your professional background. Um, <laughs> boring. <laughs> I've edited videos. I've, if you've seen Does the Shoe Fit with Chunks and Philly, I edited the first few seasons of that. If you watched some of the Sidemen stuff last year, 20 versus 1 Kaiser and that. 
uh, a few other shows and whatnot. So a lot of YouTube views, 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 and YouTube yeah. views. Yeah. Subscribers. Can <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. we get a prep check? Ooh, what? Oh, He's original one of one donks. No. <laughs> 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 What's the hardest thing you've ever had to do? Oh. Oh. I've got a degree in material science with engineering. Wow. Oh. Oh. Yeah. That, that almost yeah. broke me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Left that, said, I'm just going to edit videos. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That was the piece of work you're proudest of. <laughs> Have you seen the blog that's coming out? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when there was what three of us, four of us, we'd go away for like two months. Steve was just coming. Go, Mexico. Yeah. How many on the team now? This team, um, thirty, roughly thirty-five. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's lots of other companies. Twelve is the good old days, the original crew. Twelve to thirty is too big to be small, too small to be big. Are we a big business? Are we a small business? Mm -hmm. 35 is where it goes. We're a yeah. proper business. Do you find it hard, like, at a basic level to say, what do you do, or to answer that question? Or yeah. for you, just on a daily basis, thinking, what, what do I do? So in this season of life, I'm playing a slightly different game than I played as an entrepreneur. This season of life is all about, like, reputational leverage. Yep. And with reputational leverage, I can hire exceptional individuals, I can raise capital, and I can set missions. So there's three things I do. Start new companies, back, back existing great companies that are off to the races already. When people hear that there's 41 companies in what we call the flight group, they think, oh, you must be really busy. Well, the, the reason I'm not right. yeah. is because... Because you know, there's 41 companies. Cause, yeah, and the exceptional individuals running them. So it's exceptional operators. Very similar to yourself. Mm -hmm. People are always like, well, how do you mentally manage them? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, they're off. They're doing their thing. They do their thing, yeah. We grab a selfie. Yes. And us. Is it recording? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tables have turned. Close your eyes. Want to say a huge well done <laughs> to William Perez for we've got your present. Oh. Woo! Look at that. Uh, <laughs> you're a hundredth. Hashtag ad. This sorry, is the sorry, delicious. Sorry. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Look at that team. Wow. Wow. Now let's give it away for engagement. I was saying to Steve that we should give this away in a cool way. Yeah. So yeah. Steve's going to put a million pounds in this. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, time is money, it's yeah. Time. I know this is going to be a Grace has fainted. <laughs> Overwhelmed by the success of Behind the Diary. <laughs> Is it cold? It was warm. Do I tell them that I tried it warm? Cold, try it cold. Who's calling me? Are they calling me? You're Is on... it cold? Um, no comment. <laughs> it's not cold. This one's cold. I like the branding though. The new branding's amazing. It's so much better. The, the new branding, it's so, so much better. The, plus new pear ginger. Oh, it's really, it's really good. It's really good, really fresh. That's my new favorite. Yeah, I just actually spoke to the teams. They've all tried it. And they've all said it's their favorite flavor. And I have to say the branding, I think, is a huge step forward. I think the whole, like, do you know we talked about this whole creating an or situation, not an and? By writing healthy energy on it, you literally create 
I think everything else is unhealthy energy. Congratulations on a great product. Well done. Incredible. Great branding. Right. Speak to you later. Bye bye. Speaking here, doing some judging here. We come out here every year. Been here, what, three years now in a row? I think there's 450,000 people in attendance in total. I also believe the tickets are free, which is great. So not many countries do that. So I'm looking forward to it. You get it in the on where you didn't get it in the airport. You got it online. I bought, I bought it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I've read it. Read it. Read it. I'm halfway through it. Again, okay. It's so well written. Oh, thank you so uh, much. Yeah, yeah. But it's just like you know. Thank you. It's so understandable as well. The way you put everything, it's like it's, it's simple. Really, it's very simple. But Good. Uh, yeah. It, it lands every time. Like yeah. And my job was to keep it really short. Yeah. Well, Eat every law in, just make it real simple and you have done. Yeah. Though. Good. Yeah, these are all little notes that I've taken over the years and I went to the jungle on my own for a long period of time and just turned them into a book. Oh, yeah, amazing. Yeah, like I say, I got to the top of the show designing boxing. And oh, I think it's because of the way I act in this book. Oh, man, I appreciate you so yeah. much. Thank well, you so much. Yeah, Krishna, yeah. If he does, hey, you okay. No worries, Nick. Thank <laughs> you so much. Pleasure it. to meet you, Nick. Yeah, Thank you, you too, man. Thank you. That's Thank just, you. Just, that's just crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. I really appreciate that. Thank you. I've never thought I'd have met you. I mean, I went to book five. Yeah, yeah. Wow. See you in the morning. See you. Yeah. visibility and objective visibility on some of the nuance. We need to have something that we've measured in order to know that we're improving. I know there's like the financial metrics and whatever else, but they're like qualitative metrics from client feedback. From my experience, people sit in a state of dissonance until they're shown what their, their actual clients or the actual feedback. The last thing anyone wants to acknowledge is that they're bad at what they do. The only way to take a real impartial objective case to them is to have their clients tell them that. But also, like we, we, we want some kind of score that we can say in three months time, we've taken it from 70% satisfaction to 85% satisfaction. Good, thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Tom. Nice to meet you. How are you? Well, Hi, pleasure. nice to meet you. Are you in London the 15th of March? Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming to London. Okay. Hit me up when you get yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Enjoy yourself. Hey, nice what, was your, what was your injury, by the way? It's better. You know what? You know I'm not on your team this year. I'm on England team. <laughs> well, I don't even know why I'm saying hi to you. Are you serious? Yeah, they said they had to move you. They said, listen, we need to win England, we need to win it to Euros, yeah? They said, no, they did. So I'm going to be up against you. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah seriously. Where, where was your injury? <laughs> Thank you for having me again. So good to be back and to see Leap is getting bigger and better every year. How do we deal with dissonance, change, threats? The future is going to be owned by people that are capable of hearing something really strange 
and leaning into the dissonance. Web3 was the same for me. I, I heard people were buying NFTs on the internet that were monkey pictures and pictures of rocks for hundreds of thousands of pounds. It sounded really, really bizarre. I, I thought they're weirdos, they're idiots, this is a Ponzi scheme. And then I remembered that this is the exact reaction people had to me in 2010 when I tried to get them to join social media and I launched my social media company. So what I did is I leaned into the dissonance. I bought one of those monkey pictures for a quarter of a million dollars. It's worth very little now, but that's not the point. The point was, it taught me about technology. I started a company called Third Web. The company's raised $31 million. It's worth $160 million. Big team in San Francisco, 50 people. I leaned into something that felt bizarre. how do you think Saudi Arabia is playing a big part in the future of technology? I think it's really remarkable that Saudi Arabia have put on events like this where hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people can come and see what the future looks like, can discuss that future, can touch that future and everyone's been able to get here pretty much for free. So it's a remarkable thing that they've done. And you know, I think this is now the biggest technology conference in the world, I hear. So you know, not only is there a diversity of ideas, but you get to see multiple industries and how the future is going to improve and affect all of our lives. Thank you. So thank, you. thank you. No worries. You should post it on your social media. Okay, I will do. <laughs> she said to me, you should post that on your social media. <laughs> Catch you later. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. See you soon. Thank you. back at Leap today for day two of Leap. Today is the judging day, so every year I come out to Riyadh, we have a judging day where lots of entrepreneurs from the region come up on stage and we decide which ones are gonna be the benefactors of millions and millions of dollars of investment. It's really great to do it because I get to hear about more global ideas and some really, really big ambitious ideas and it always inspires me. And it also, for me, it's a window into what's going on in other parts of the world in terms of innovation. So I love today when I get to see Karen Brady, who's a good um, good friend of mine and a previous Diary of a podcast guest. So I get to hang out with her, which I always look forward to as well. So this is my favorite date. God, look who it is. <laughs> Uh, How are you, mate? You're right. Oh, good to see you. Yeah, good. All right. Good to see you. How you been? Yeah, all good. Oh, look, my own class said that's a disaster. She's only invested in any business that does have a good that one. That's just my bottom line. Because good businesses are ones that are diverse. Diversity is a good business decision. And I think that one of the best examples I can give is actually Dragon's Den. You remove one person from the Dragon's Den panel and you create a massive blind spot where the other four who are left behind would have a higher chance of losing their money. Sarah Davis is the only mother we have on the panel. We get about 10, 15 businesses a year that have products for mothers. When they walk in the door, we look at Sarah for her lived experience. My biggest business at the moment has two female co-founders and me. The CEO is a woman called Georgie Holt, who's an exceptional individual. The number two is a woman. I really don't care about virtue signaling and hitting quotas. For me, it's good for business. And I don't want to leave any talent off the field because we're not diverse. Thank you so much. I do, bro, because I, I, I go in the mud too, so I'm not immune, you know, because I'm a human being as well. So I, I have to say, I'm really, really in, impressed and inspired by your, your self-awareness on this. Like, impressed by your, your understanding of yourself and you even saying, listen, I need some time. So important. Like, I need some time just to, like, I'm feeling a bit burnt out. Like, being in touch with yourself like that is so, so important. So, huge admiration for that. It's inspired me. Going up on stage, we, we're doing the judging um, session, so there's going to be a ton of startups pitching for us. I think for a million dollars, 
and between myself, Karen Brady, and James Kahn, we're going to be deciding who gets the money. It's always nice because you get to see lots of really diverse businesses and the found, you know, this is life-changing money. It's a million dollars we're giving away of Leap's money to these great entrepreneurs, so looking forward to it. How long do we get to ask them questions? So three minutes for a pitch, three minutes for a Q&A. Okay, and there's three of us. Yeah, there's four of you. She's got a chicken. Oh, so, so interesting. It's so different this year. You know, we were talking about that thing earlier about not disagreeing with someone. Yeah. The, the lady that has the coaching business, yeah. she, was, she was exceptional at handling a question. Such a great question. Yeah. So well yeah. delivered, yeah. brilliant, great. <laughs> it makes you feel amazing. <laughs> yeah. I like the drone one. I thought that was cool. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. You want me to take a photo? Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you guys. Nice. See you next time. Thank you so much. Yeah, to the Hilton. I'm hungry. Job done, lads. Well done. That's what a hell of a cool shot, that. Give me the camera. Right, let's jump up. Give me the camera. Don't worry about that. I got this. There's <laughs> one Look at that. You've seen anything like that before? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Don't laugh at it. You can see that. You can zoom in after. Which one? Which? On the left of the lens. Yeah, got it. So I'm thinking about doing a book about failure, yeah. and I also thought about decision making, which was the, came from that inquiry we had. How to make a decision? I think that's a timeless book about like decision making. Like, how do you make a decision? I do. I, my, I do love writing business books. Then I just really love the idea of like someone starting their business and they they're struggling, so they read the book and it, it helps them. Yeah. I'm surprised how well Diarrhea did. And he's doing really surprising. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I was saying earlier? Basically, I was sat at an event ready to go on stage and a friend of mine, a very, very um, well-known, ultra successful, Grammy award winning friend of mine sent me a text completely out of the blue that said, I'm in the mud. And I had no idea what this person meant. And I stared at this text thinking, I'm in the mud, I'm in the mud, I'm in the mud. And then it dawned on me, that's what Simon Sinek had said on my podcast. Um, I have another friend and he's going through some shit and I'm honored that when I called him up and said, hey, I haven't talked to you, what you've been going through? He just let it all out. And I could hear the frustration, I could hear the pain, and I didn't try and fix it. I just encouraged him to keep talking. What else? Go on, tell me more. What else? Oh my God, that must, that's really, go on. Yeah, and just sat in the mud with him. And it was an, it was an honor. I'll tell you, it was an honor that he felt comfortable enough to do that. Because I guarantee it, he, like so many, are really good at hiding it, faking it, suppressing it. A year ago, he said that, and I thought, oh my God, he's listened to the podcast and he's in the mud. So I texted him back and was like, call me, let's talk. Um, but the, the really sort of profound moving thing was, there was two things. And I, when I spoke to him on the phone, I said to him, it's such an honor that you would text me in a moment when you're in the mud struggling. And it's so beautiful that friends, especially men who often struggle with their emotions, have something like that, a phrase we can use with our guy friends to let our guy friends know that we need them for a second. And it doesn't matter who you are in life. It doesn't matter how strong you are or how masculine you think you are. We all need each other. We all need, as the SAS and the Navy SEALs say, we need brotherhood. And in that moment, with that text message, 
Not only would the person sending it feel supported, but I feel more bound to them. I feel that sense of brotherhood. And it made me think, I should tell all my friends, I should tell all my friends that if you ever struggle, send me a text message just saying, I'm in the mud and I will drop whatever I'm doing and I will call you straight away. And that's exactly what I did. And so I think more people should have a code word like that because I'm a serial chronic fixer. I think men are more like this than women from what I've observed. Men tend to show up with like the hammer and the spanner whenever there's a problem and say, okay, what have I got to do to correct the situation? But Simon Sinek taught me that what people often need is they just need someone to sit in the mud with them, which in many cases just means just like, listen to me, hear me out. And, um, and listen, we're all in the mud sometimes, even me. It's good to have people that you can reach out to, to sit in the mud with at times. Yeah, I'm gonna go to bed. So I'll see you guys next week. But here, here's what we're gonna do, because we haven't done this for a while, is we're gonna do a competition. Um, I've got a bunch of Diary of a CEO merch for my tour that I'm on at the moment. So I'm gonna give away 10 pieces of Diary of a CEO merch. It's basically, I don't have any on me at the moment, but turn it around, show them. It's basically, we've got loads of these. So we've got t-shirts, we've got caps like this, and we've got hoodies. On the, does it say on the back as well, the thing? It says Team DOAC, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. Um, the person who, and this will be revealed in next week's episode. The, re the person who correctly guesses how long I'm currently locked out of my iPad for because I forgot the code five times is gonna win the Diary of a CEO match. You'll win, a cap you'll win one item, so it could be a cap, a t-shirt, or a hoodie, and I'll sign it in the collar as well. So I I'm gonna give you a clue. It's a number of minutes. It's below 60 minutes. Um, and here is the answer. You'll this will be unblurred next week's episode. Do you think anyone's gonna guess that? But it's guessable, but it's, 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 there's gonna be no logic to your guess. It's gonna be I random. <laughs> well, I, I've been locked out of this for eight hours today. So we're down to, we're less than an hour now. So yeah, I've forgotten the code. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. See you next week.